What's up guys and welcome to the HVAC Dope Show. Today's video is probably going to be the dopest video we have ever made because we are going to be bringing you the truth about high efficiency furnaces. So if you're watching this video, you're probably in the market for a new furnace and weighing all the pros and cons and have heard a variety of different things from different contractors in your area, I am sure. Some might recommend high efficiency furnaces and some might recommend a standard 80% efficient furnace. Some might be recommending heat pumps paired with backup electric air handlers. And with all the different opinions and options out there, you may be finding it difficult to cut through the noise and get the truth about whether or not a high efficiency furnace is the right choice for your home. But worry no more because by the end of this video, you will know whether or not a high efficiency furnace is the right choice for you. So if you haven't already, smash that like button and let's dive in. So first off, let's explain the difference of what actually happens in a high efficiency furnace versus a standard 80% efficiency system. And what do those numbers even mean? You've probably heard numbers like 92% efficient, 96% efficient, 98% efficient, but what do they actually mean and what does that number represent? That number, simply put, is the percent of thermal energy that is transferred from the natural gas or propane to the home from the furnace. So essentially what that means is what percentage of the fuel is being converted from its natural form into heat energy. And that's what's incredible about a high efficiency, 98% efficient furnace is that it can literally, if it's running at peak efficiency, convert almost 100% of the gas into heat. Now you might be thinking, okay, that answers my question. More efficient is better. I can stop watching this video now. But hold on, because all of this efficiency doesn't come without its caveats, which is why we will what we will touch on shortly. And you also might be wondering why or how is it more efficient. So let's start by explaining how a furnace works in layman's terms in 30 seconds or less. A normal residential furnace is essentially a series of tubes or chambers that have fire in them, and when the furnace fan is running, it is blowing air across the heat exchanger and pulling heat off of those tubes. So the fire is going through the tubes and out the exhaust to the outside of your home, and the heat is staying in your home because they found the fan is blowing air across the heat exchanger. And where I'm going with this is the simple way to explain efficiency is what percent of heat stays in the home versus what percent is getting exhausted and wasted out of the chimney. So in a 98% system, 2% of the heat is wasted through the exhaust and 98% of the heat from the combustion process, aka fire making, remains in the home. And the way this is accomplished in a high efficiency furnace is through the use of a condensing heat exchanger. A standard 80% efficient system essentially has one heat exchanger that the exhaust flows through before getting exhausted out of the house and is therefore less efficient, which is why only 80% of the heat stays in the home. However, in a high efficiency system, there are two heat exchangers. One is the primary and the other is the secondary heat exchanger. And the secondary heat exchanger is the condensing portion of the heat exchanger. And what that means is inside the condensing portion of the heat exchanger, it is pulling out that last bit of heat from the exhaust gases before the exhaust is sent outside through your chimney. Now, the benefit of this is that you are being more efficient but the downside is that you technically have more working parts and therefore the potential for more problems. So when it comes to the installation of a high efficiency, it is very important to make sure that it is properly installed. Otherwise you can have issues which result in premature failure. And I will talk to you about what to look for in an HVAC contractor and questions to ask when it comes to your high efficiency installation so that you can make sure you're choosing a company that knows what they are doing and will install it properly. But I will briefly touch on some ad additional information that you should know about high efficiency furnaces and examples of when not to use them. Because high efficiency furnaces produce condensation, it is a big no-no to never, ever, ever, ever put a high efficiency system in an attic, ever. 
The reason is because what happens is on the coldest nights of the year, when you have single digit or sub-zero temperatures, the condensation in your furnace can freeze and prevent the system from heating. This is why we don't put a high efficiency in an attic. And this is why high efficiencies must be installed either in a crawl space or inside the condition space, AKA the home, to ensure they operate properly. The other thing to consider is that a high efficiency furnace, you have to run separate exhaust venting and PVC because there is a large amount of moisture in the system. So you will need to figure out where to run that exhaust, which is why it can be difficult in existing homes that have finished basements to figure out how to get the exhaust piping outside without damaging the walls or with minimal invasiveness in terms of having to pull down drywall etc. And the last thing that I'll point out that is probably the first thing you think you're thinking about as you're watching us and that is the price of high efficiency. Now if you've already gotten several bids and have had a few contractors out to your house and have had a range of options presented to you what you've probably noticed is that high efficiency furnaces cost more to install and sometimes substantially more. And what you're asking yourself is is the cost worth it? Now, the short answer in my opinion and experience is maybe, and there's a couple of questions you're going to have to answer in order to figure that out, and I'll outline those for you now. And the number one question you should answer yourself is how long are you going to live in the home? If you're not planning on living in the home for at least five years, chances are you will not break even on the investment unless natural gas is extremely expensive in your area. If you are on propane, aka you have a tank that sits on your lawn and you pay for fuel by the gallon, then a high efficiency furnace is almost always makes sense because of how expensive propane is. And with skyrocketing propane pr prices in recent years, it can literally be five times as expensive to heat your home on propane as compared with natural gas, which means that if you have a 20% savings roughly between an 80% efficient furnace and a 98% efficient furnace, if you're spending $5,000 a year on propane, you could literally save $1,000 your first year of use. Now, natural gas, however, is very cheap in several places, and if you're in a moderate climate where you are only using the furnace for one or two months out of the year, then it might not make sense in your area to put in a high efficiency, and especially in temperate climates like southern Arizona or California that have mild winters, a high efficiency inverter heat pump might be a better option paired with an 80% efficient furnace as an air handler slash backup heat source. But in places like Colorado where natural gas is very cheap, oftentimes the break-even point can be as far out as 7 to even 10 years if your gas bill is less than $150 to $200 a month. So if you're curious as to how to actually calculate what your potential savings would be, a rough way to look at it is go get your bill and break down what the actual gas usage costs are during your months of heavy heating and then multiply that number by 20% and then multiply that annual savings by the number of years you plan on being in the home. And then you can determine whether or not the savings is worth it and whether or not you will recoup your cost through the course of ownership. Which brings me to my next topic, which is when it is a bad idea to install a high efficiency. And number one, I already touched on that earlier, and that is in an attic. If someone tries to sell you a high efficiency system for your attic, head for the hills and find another contractor. If you install a high efficiency system in an attic, any savings that you may have had from the increase in efficiency will be flushed down the toilet in the form of service calls and repeated callbacks to fix it. Don't do it. That's my advice. And the second time it is a bad idea to do it is in a rental property. And the reason is because renters are notorious for not taking care of homes and high efficiencies are more touchy, which means they require basic maintenance like regular filter changes. So if you're a homeowner, naturally you're going to take care of or good care of your equipment because you paid for it. However, renters have zero skin in the game and if they put a lot of wear and tear on your equipment, it can fail prematurely and your investment is down the toilet. And the second point why it's a bad idea to put a high efficiency in a rental is because most of the time you're not paying the bill. So from a financial perspective, you're not going to benefit from putting in a more expensive high efficiency furnace. Now, if you are in the field of thought that says, okay, Howard, but even though it's a rental, I still want to put in a high efficiency because I care about the environment and I want to put in a system that is better for the planet and burns less natural gas. Okay, 
Kudos to you, that's fine, but if that's what you really want to do and you're doing this for the planet, what you should consider instead is installing solar panels on the roof and putting in a high efficiency heat pump like a Daikin Fit or VRV Life so that you can offset 100% of your consumption and use zero fossil fuels to heat and cool your home. The only downside to this is cost because you are putting in solar panels and you are also putting in a high efficiency heat pump as well, but Currently, this is not a bad option if you have the money or the credit to get approved for financing on these items because the tax credits available are actually quite substantial for installing solar. And in your market, there's also insane rebates uh, for heat pumps. So if you happen to be a tree hugger that has some cash lying around and needs a substantial tax credit, then it might be worth considering because that is still available in 2022. But you should still know that your renters will mo most likely still not take as good of care of the equipment as you would. So if you're going that route, make sure you have a reliable company set you up on a maintenance agreement that can go out and change your filters regularly for you and make sure the system is being maintained so that you actually accomplish what you set out to do when you purchased it in the first place. So in a nutshell, that is our two cents and where we stand on high efficiency furnaces. They are great and work well when they are installed properly. They can offer substantial savings in the long run. Uh, so just make sure you are using a reliable contractor when getting them installed, which brings me to my last piece of advice related to high efficiency systems. And that is questions to ask the contractor about high efficiency systems when they are in your home. When it comes to high efficiencies, it's very important that they are sized properly for your home because if they are oversized, you will get shorter run times, which will cause them to short cycle and negates all the efficiency that you were going for in the first place. With the exception of a handful of communicating furnaces like Daikin's DM97MC, which is a modulating top of the line high efficiency furnace, almost all high efficiency furnaces require a combustion analysis to make sure they are burning efficiently. Um, any single stage and most two-stage high efficiency system will require gas valve adjustment, which adjusts the air to fuel ratio so that it is running efficiently, but you have to have a combustion analyzer like a Bacharach, um, that's a brand of combustion analyzer, in order to test the exhaust gases and make sure the system is running the way it is supposed to. Uh, modulating systems like the Daikin's DM7, uh, DM97MC actually don't require combustion analysis, but it's still important to check for good measure, which is why you want to make sure your contractor does a combustion analysis on startup. And besides that, those are the most important things. Uh, standard general back, best practice uh, procedures that you would use on a standard efficiency furnace also apply to high efficiency furnace um, furnaces, and this includes things like uh, duct sealing, etc., just to ensure you have a quality installed product. So, if you found this information helpful, please smash that like button and subscribe to our channel and check out some of these other videos we've made on various topics related to heating and air conditioning. And YouTube is going to suggest two to you right now because they think these are relevant for you to watch as well. And if you still have more questions, post them in the comment section below because we read them and we will respond to them and even make an additional video based on your suggestions. So. Thanks for tuning in to the HVAC Dope Show. I'm your host, Howard Binder, signing off.